Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another house flipper. So, as promised, I said I would come back to this place and I would fix it up and sell it for this episode. So, here we are. So, as I said, uh, you do kind of have like a bit of a review system. So, if you notice the people to the left side of the screen, they're going to be telling me what they want in the house. Now, I don't technically need to do what they say, per se. Like, they'll kind of say, oh, hey, I'm a student. I need shelves for my books. So, if you think this guy might be... The one who's going to give you the most money, they, you know, that's the one you go with. Now, I would always say put as much into the house as you can. Kind of listen to most most of them because the more work you put into it, the more likely they're going to pay more. You know, the less work you put into it, the less they're going to pay. It's pretty basic. I, you know, I really hope there aren't houses that are just abandoned like this. Like, this is just, this is just bad. Like, this is just shocking that there is no roaches or anything just lingering around here. I'm gonna get rid of the furniture, the doors, we don't... We don't need that. Oh, there you go, what'd I say? I was like, hey, it's surprising that there's no roaches. Oh, there they are. Oh, that's all just grimy. Oh, just gross. A lot of vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Like how it's it, it, the game makes it so simple. Yeah, you find roaches, you just suck them up with a vacuum cleaner. That simple, guys. No, it's not, no, it's not that sim simple. Um, back then, I used to work for this pet store. I'm not gonna say which one for the sake of avoiding a lawsuit, because knowing how companies are nowadays, I'd say that I'd say their name, and I'm just gonna get sued. Um, I remember we used to have a kind of a roach problem because. In the fish tank section, there was always a kind of leak. It wasn't severe to the point where we'd have to worry about the fish, like, you know, losing water in their tank. It was more of like the pipe that went from our plumbing to the tanks kind of just, like, leaked a little bit. If anything, there was more condensation and, you know, dropped fish food and anything, so it was, like, the perfect habitat for roaches. So, And we worked right next to a McDonald's, so... Yeah, you're kind of asking for roaches at that point. And... I remember every now and then a customer would be like, Hey, uh, don't want to be that guy, but uh, notice that you guys have roaches. And me, being the way I am, I was like, oh, alright. Go up to my boss. Hey, uh, we got roaches. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, cool. Here's a can of Raid. Really? Alright, screw it. Like, like, most people would see him and be like, Oh, that's gross. Me, I'm like, yeah, screw it. I'll have fun with this. Blast under the... Uh, Fish tanks with all the, ro you know, with uh, the raid. Roaches scurry out because they're like, what the hell is this? And I just go to town trying to knock them all out. Yeah, it was, it was gross. Because, I mean, the aftermath, because like, at first I was like, ah, it's just another insect. And my boss would go, by the way, roaches carry eggs on their back, so chances are you might bring home roaches. Because, you know, eggs might be on your shoe. And I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. I'm just going to... Go bleach my shoe, and I actually did. I actually did. I uh, after st stomping on him, I uh, took I took my shoe to the back room. I found like the nearest, like, like the thickest brush we pro possibly had. I dipped the uh, the brush in bleach, and then I scrubbed the hell out of my shoe. <laughs> so if scrubbing them didn't kill me, the bleach definitely killed them. I think I also hit my shoe with a little bit of raid too, just to make sure that if there were eggs. There was no way they were going to hatch. Uh, let us get the Ultra Mop. Let's see, does this... Yeah, it's clean a little bit faster. I think. I think it's cleaning. Get rid of that nastiness. Seriously, I, I just... It amazes me how there's... How, like, it, it, there's no way houses are this bad where there's just grime on the ceiling for no particular reason. gonna get rid of that. I mean, I don't need to get rid of these. These are still kind of nice, but you know what? I'm one of those people that I'd rather... Oh, that's what the... Wait. When did I upgrade this? Does this go with a mop? I think I might have goofed. But yeah, this reminds me of that show, Another Dirty Room. It wasn't a show. It was a YouTube series. But, um, this group of guys, and, and of course, they had fun with it. Uh, they would go to different hotel rooms and whatnot. Like they would go on Yelp and find the worst possible 
hotel rooms in America, and they would just be like, oh yeah, look, look, this room's got roaches. This one has, you know, crack pipes. This one's got blood on the be on the bed, and you're looking like, good God, how, who, what manager owner, or manager owner, yes, what what hotel owner says this is acceptable? That's disgusting. So it's like, but I mean, I guess of course it's a different situation when you own a house and you just let it go to hell because you don't really have any way to really impress other than yourself, and if you're fine with it. Who's going to say otherwise? Alright. See, I need a tool like this for cleaning windows. Like, it just... Is this really a thing or is this just a game mechanic? Because this would be awesome. If you ever have to clean up your house, you know, your mom's bugging you, hey, clean the windows, you just pull out this thing, give it a quick little spritz and it takes care of the rest. I mean, granted, yeah, it's not like a little RC car, which would be awesome. Come on. Let's be honest. A Roomba for the windows. Just, just, listen, whatever company is involved with the room is just hire me. I, I got ideas. For now, I'm probably going to forget. Oh, hey, a tile and paneling. Yay. Uh, I want to paint. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have painting. Yay. I'm going to paint faster. Go here. Let's do... I, I, I want to keep it blue. For some reason, I like it. So, let's see what kind of blues we got. Let's do... Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Paint. Fill her up, and we'll start with the windows just to get it out of the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is much faster. Oh, come on. Come on. The reason why it's giving me trouble is this right here, the mounting. I want to say this is for a radiator. Yeah, th these kind of games are bad for that, where something will be in the way, and the game's like, what? You wanted to do this? No. No. No, you don't get that. Who do you think you are? You don't get that mechanic. Get out of here. But yeah, I don't really think the paint affects homeowners either like I think I think if you look like the guy that looks like Donald Trump actually I think they call him like Ronald Dump or something like that which is funny um I think he's like yeah I'm single I don't have kids so I only need one bedroom and like he just needs the bare necessities like just the minimum like a kitchen a place to sleep and a place to do work like so I think like in this case this dude would just have a bedroom a kitchen desk kind of area and then that would be it for him. Alright, uh, let's see. So, sorry. Uh, there we go. Don't you just love it when something tabs you out? Hey, you have an update! Yay! I don't care right now. Windows, leave me alone! Ugh, evidently enough, I just fixed my computer the last couple of days. The thing I hate about Windows, and I know I'm getting a little off topic, like, I love Windows as an operating system because, you know, being a PC guy, it just it works better. I prefer that over Mac any day of the week. But Windows 10 is, at the, is so complex at the same time, and it's, it's just really annoying um like for instance to give you an idea if you, if you use windows 10 go to your task manager and take a look at all the processes there's a lot of stuff running all at once and what happens is that while all this stuff is running the reason why this is, is because windows had was notorious for like a program would die on you like say i, I don't know uh a Win32 program just decided to stop. It just decided to break down on you. It would have been a non-essential function, essentially. But being that it worked directly with an essential function, it kind of just died. And then you're like, oh, well, now what do I do? You're kind of, you're kind of boned. So, what they did was, which was clever, they basically divided up those functions so that way if one thing breaks down you still have a chance to recover yourself. You can 
always shut down, reboot, and that program should run fun properly. You can always run command prompt and confirm that maybe there's software that's not running properly. Maybe there's something isn't working right, and you could just run a program and it should fix it, correct it. Which, again, I like. It makes repair easier, but then at the same time, there are times where you try to do something and it's like, oh, hey, we need to repair again. It's like, didn't I just do this? Really? It's it's kind of like, uh, what would be a good example? It's kind of like when you need to take your dog out for the bathroom. It's just like, you take him out, do what you gotta do, he does his business. Then you come back and it's like, standing by the door like, gotta go again. It's like, what, didn't we just go? You didn't, j didn't you not finish? Like, come on. Yeah. I don't know if I want, you know what? Because I'm putting a lot of work into this one. I don't know if I want to sell this place or not. So... Uh, yeah, but... That's pretty much it. I had an issue with my Windows where, for some reason, it would keep saying, hey, you have updates. It's like, okay, great. And then I'd run and be like, nope, no updates. But you're out of uh, out of date. It's like, but, but wait. That, for you to say that it's out of date means an update is available. So why are you saying there's no updates available when it's obviously out of date? Like, hello? And every time I would... I would force the update. There is actually a way of forcing Windows to update. There is, If you download it off Microsoft's website, there is a... I forgot what it was. I think it was like an updater tool or something like that. And it was kind of like the... I don't know. I don't want to call it the nuclear option. But it was kind of like if, say, your computer, like in my case, doesn't want to update for some reason. It decides, you know what? I'm not going to work. I'm just not going to update. You would use this program and it essentially forced the update but the problem with that was that while i was doing that it was it would work the update would go through the problem is though that once my os came back up it wouldn't really come back up because i would get what people called black screen of death and essentially what that was for me it was just a simple black screen and my mouse would show with a little loading bar a little loading circle i guess in this case now um just flashing around it so, basically, the OS would be there, but it doesn't know how to turn on. An essential function of that operating system wasn't there. It didn't install properly, whatever the case may be. So, I couldn't even get into the command prompt to correct it. I, I couldn't even fix it. There was no OS to get to at that point. Um, and every time you turn on the computer, it would start loading normally, and then it would just go to this black screen. So, in that case, your two options are either reinstall your operating system... Or well, there is kind of a, not a comfortable option, but what you could do, and I, did I just sell the radiator mount? Yes, I did. God damn it. Okay, uh, radiator, we are looking for the radiator system, gonna, gonna put it right there. But, essentially what you would do in that situation, if, say, for some reason... Uh, now, just a side note, I am trying to more or less bring back this building's original paints, I guess. Original colors. Kind of just keeping it its original color. But um, what you would do in that situation, like I said, it's not the most comfortable option because anybody who works on PCs knows it's not the best option, but it works. So for Windows 10, it has a function in it where if it can, if it's detecting that for some reason during the part where it should be loading into the OS, during its loading phase... If it fails to load, it will force itself to go into automatic repair and correct any errors that have occurred. The way to do this is the second, um, when you turn on your computer, typically it should come up at first with your motherboard. Like, say you're using a Dell computer, so it should pop up Dell, or it should pop up HP, whatever company you're using, that's the brand that should pop up. Alright, and then afterwards, you should see the little Windows icon and the little loading bubble thing, circle, whatever you want to call it, floating around underneath it. During that phase, during that second, that's when you shut down your computer. Give it a second, reboot, do it again. 
Wait for it to bring up the Windows logo again. As soon as it brings up the logo, shut it down, reboot again. The second or third time doing this, the Windows operate the Windows that you have should pop up saying uh, "repair in progress" or something like that because it should. Did, did, uh, ah, I'm slurring my words. It should detect that something has gone wrong, and it should see that it needs to be fixed. In which case, then, it would just be like, alright, time to uninstall the update, because that's the only thing we can do. It's bugged. And that's what happened to me. I uninstalled my update, I reinstalled, and from there on, it kind of just sort of worked. Like, it wasn't a permanent fix, but it worked. Um... So, in that case, and like like I said, with my situation where it just didn't want to update, as crappy of an option as it is, because I know it's something that most people don't want to hear, you really can only just wait for an update to come out to correct the update. At some point, a new build will come up, and you're just going to be able to update. It's a, it's a problem that will just fix itself. As abnormal it is to say that, to say that, oh yeah, the computer's just gonna fix itself. It does. It's a really, again, it's a really, like, it's not the best option. And for anybody who's like me, who's just like, no, I want this fixed now. Yeah, you're gonna have to swallow it. You're gonna have to swallow and deal with the fact that, you're just gonna have to swallow your pride for a minute and deal with the fact that it's not gonna fix. It's not gonna fix immediately, you have to just leave it. Uh, because at that point, you're just going to be running in circles, rinsing and repeating the same issues over and over again. Kind of like these tiles. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. Right. Nope, nope. going to drop that, that, that. Okay. Good God, this room looks like... This looks like some place you go and take somebody to kill them. Jeez. Um, I want... It's a bathroom. Let's just, let's just do blue tiles. Why not? I like that. But yeah, um, PC repair is both easy and annoying in the same regard. It can be the easiest thing in the world with no problems whatsoever. It can also be the biggest throbbing pain in... The uh, biggest throbbing headache you can... Oh, it's not the... Wait, what? It's not the tile I had. How did that happen? But yeah, it, it... PC repair isn't hard, but it is hard. It really depends on the situation, because no problem... Is, every problem is unique. And every problem technically has its own unique solution. Um, and there is no really right way nowadays with the way Windows is. Windows is pretty much built to be fixed at home. Um, you know, using command prompt is one way to fix it. Reinstalling the operating system is another way. Uh, it's a nuclear option, but it works. I would only say do that if you have nothing on your device that you don't, that you care about. If there's, if it's a fresh computer with very minimum files on it, you know, maybe one or two pictures you downloaded off Google, Maybe Google Chrome itself. Like, things that you don't care about that you can always just easily re you know get back. And uh, for people that don't know this, because believe me not, believe me, people don't know this for some reason. Your emails don't typically save to your computer. It saves to the online server of whatever email you're using. So you're using Gmail, Yahoo, AOL. It will save to their servers. So you can reinstall your operating system as many times as you like. Your emails will never go away because they're on an online server. The only way they go away is if somebody manages to break into your email account and steal everything from you and change your password and prevent you from getting back in. That's the only way. As long as your email is still your email and nobody has access, you're good. And I, I know at this point you're probably like, wait, wait. How do we go from PC repair to emails? You don't know how many times. I've worked for... I have worked in PC repair. Unfortunately, where I worked, it was more like they cared more about PC sales than repairs. Even though I got the job to be a repairman, 
because I love working on computers. It just I find it interesting. Um, I love the challenge. You know, new, there's a new problem. You know, the operating system doesn't work. What do we do? How do we fix this? How do we get past this? Uh, I had a guy come in, and his operating system just kept blue screening. We didn't know why. We couldn't get into the computer. He really didn't want to wipe his computer because he had files from work that he needed. So we kept playing around. We figured it out it was actually his Norton screwing him up. Um, which in a rare case, yeah, Norton can do that to you. It's not guaranteed. It won't happen to every computer, but it's more of like the perfect storm type. So it, it depends on the situation. But in his case, it was causing a blue screen. We uninstalled Norton. We got him a different antivirus. We fixed up his computer, made sure the files were good. We backed up his stuff, and then we wiped it just to be safe. And he, he was happy with it. And that, that's the kind of stuff I enjoy having to go through that, to like, sit there and go, okay, what's the problem? How do we fix this? What's the solution? Of course, it doesn't always help when uh, you try to explain to the guy, hey, listen, your operating system's messed up, and we need to do this, that, and the third. And the guy's looking at you like you got five heads, and he's like, huh? Like, you kind of want to start dumbing things down, but at the same time, you get in trouble for that. It's like, listen, your computer broke. It no work. Computer booty thing needs to be fixed. But unfortunately, when you question a customer's intelligence, because they... Can, can this work? I don't know why that works, but okay. You question a customer's intelligence, and you're the bad guy when they're the one that doesn't want to understand what's going on. But I digress. And, you know, I enjoy working on computers, and it, it was a line of work that I enjoyed. I just hated that their focus was sales when I went there to be a PC fixer guy. I'm, I had a major brain fart there for a second. I, I meant to say repairman. I just said fixer guy. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. Windows is easy to fix. But at the same time, it's kind of a pain because it depends on what killed it in the first place. If it's a virus, that's kind of an easy fix because then you just got to wipe it and wipe your computer and reload and you should be fine. If it's the update itself, you're going to continuously have this problem until Microsoft realizes, oh, hey, our update's corrupted. We have to fix this. So, you know, that, that's what that is. But, yeah, all in all, I managed to fix my computer, at least for now. Or, more like Windows fixed itself. Quick tricks to fixing a computer would be knowing how to use it, but using command prompt. Um, just because there are simple commands like check disk and SFC that check for files and just making sure that everything's working the way it's meant to work. Oh. Uh, Okay, so we're going to put that there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I, I know it's probably, you guys are probably like, what the fuck is he talking about? Um. Yeah, yeah, just, just rambling at this point. Mem you know, remin why am I putting another toilet? I need a sink. Yeah. But, um... What was I getting at? I'm having a brain fart. Um, but yeah, I'm just reminiscing, thinking back to all my repairs and all my uh, customer service stories. Yeah, I, I, I'm still in customer service at this point, working for people, I guess. Um, I will say the most interesting job I've had so far is customer service. I mean, I, I worked in a pet store for an aquatic section taking care of the fish, which was, was pretty cool. Um, we had a... We had a saltwater tank, and just getting all the saltwater fish was really cool, but I remember having this one customer who they wanted one of those uh, sea anemones, I think it was called, if that's pronouncing it right. And I, I kept trying to get the thing to unlatch from the bottom of the tank, because what it would do is they, they kind of like stick themselves to the front not to the front, but to the bottom of the glass, like to the tank. So it's kind of like you have to scrape them off. But this guy was holding on so tight that uh, that I was like, ma'am, if I keep doing this, I'm probably going to kill it. Like, it's... You're looking at, I think it was like a $50 fish at this point. I mean, technically an enemy is a fish, I think. Or an aquatic... 
I said radiation. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the frick. I see the fallout bunker door and I'm like, oh, hey, radiation. Yay. Like, no. Um, but yeah. The, um, it was fighting with me. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, as a boy growing up, I was always saying I want to, you know, I want to be a vet. I want to be a cop. I want to be in the military and all these different jobs that kids typically say. The one thing I never thought I'd ever say to myself is, Huh. I'm fighting an aquatic plant. It's like something as Spongebob. I, I don't know how this happened. Yeah. So, it's something I never figured I'd ever say to myself. And uh, yeah, I said it plenty of times. Um, never thought I'd see it, but I saw a crawfish take down a... Koi fish. If you know... And I mean pond koi. Like those big, big goldfish. Like, not like little... Little guys, I'm talking like serious monster fish. And this li little crawfish managed to take one down. I'm sitting there. For the longest time, I'd see him manage to grab him. Now, I, I know you guys are probably saying, like, oh, anybody who knows anything about fish, why the hell would a store put crawfish in with, you know, koi fish? Well, we kind of ran out of space. We had extra crawfish and we needed more space for them. So we kind of needed to do so. It wasn't the best option, but it was an option. Um, I mean, we kind of figured, it was like, yeah, you know what? Koi's are too big. There's no way a, a little itty bitty crawfish will be able to take down a koi. No way. Never. Yeah, it happened. Because there were plenty of times I'd, I'd sit there, I'd come back, you know, I, I'd walk away for a little bit, and um, I'd see this crawfish, think he was slick, creep up on one of them, and uh, at one point I'd come back, and I'd just see him with, with this big fish in his claw, I'm like, no, no, that's a bad fish, bad, bad, bad crab. And I'd have to, like, kind of scare him away to get the fish out of there. And I would have to keep doing this. So at one point I was like, you know what? You know what, dude? Listen. You're bigger than he is. If you're going to let him catch you like that, that's your own that's your own fault. Natural selection. So, yeah. It, it was weird to sit there watching a crawfish turn a koi fish's insides into spaghetti. Again, something I never thought I'd see, but... As messed up as it is, it was kind of interesting to watch a crawfish eat. He, he went to town. He was happy. Like he, he was like, you can, you can let me have it? Really? I can have the big fish? Super stoked. Never thought I'd see a crawfish do that. Um, yeah, I've had customers come in and be like, yeah, hey, I don't want this fish anymore, and it would, I think one customer brought in, like, a monster, uh, oh, what are they, uh, angelfish, I think it was, the thing was huge, like, just, it was, again, bigger than I'd ever thought I'd see, I'm like, they get this big? And it was this job that I found out that, yeah, uh, they, these, the fish, especially saltwater fish, typically grow based on the size of their tank, if the tank is big enough, if the tank allows it, They'll just keep growing. There really is no end height. Or length, I should say. Yeah. Let me see how does this look. Yeah, that's nice. The bedroom. Um. Yeah, that, that works. Um, hmm. Let's, uh, let's decorate a little bit. Where are decorations? There it is. Um, I like using these ones just because they're easier to work with. Where are the flowers? There you go. Flowers are great. Uh, he needs documents, right? So we're going to... Furniture. But, um... But yeah, it, it was a cool job. I enjoyed working with the animals. Um, oh man, the chinchillas 
were awesome. I mean, granted, remember, it was a pet store. So, you're gonna deal with chinchillas and all these other animals and what have you. You know, it was funny because they were both friendly and mean at the same time. Like, they would... Like, it, it was... Like, they would want to play with you, and then 30 seconds later, like, yeah, you know what, never mind, I don't want you. Leave me alone. And then they run away. Or then they come back, like, no, wait, I, I want to play. So, they, they would mess with you. It was always fun. Um, they think they're slick. Uh, they would try... They, they, again, if, like, say, a customer wanted to hold one just to see if maybe they wanted to buy one, you take it out, like, oh, yeah, this is your chinchilla, your typical chinchilla, you know, is what it is. So you go to grab them, and he'd run to the other side of the tank, so it's like, oh, okay, come here, you go to grab them, and then he'd run to the other side and stare at you like, like, what, what now? What are you going to do? And, and they'd do this for the longest time, and when they finally caught you, they'd kind of go limp because they were just like, oh, I got caught. Uh, they just sit there and accept defeat. It was the cute. It, they, it was the cutest thing ever, though. They were just. They were really soft too. I never had one bite me. I had hamsters bite me. That wasn't nice. I mean, I grew up having teddy bear hamsters. I never had a problem like that. And working at pet store, I'm like, ah, I know how to handle a hamster. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, and then one bites me, and I'm like, you furry little mother. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, they weren't friendly. But it, it was a cool job. I, I enjoyed working with animals. It's just, I, I want to say the, the most annoying thing out of it, believe it or not, crazy cat ladies. It's the last thing you'd really ever expect from a job like that, but yeah. Crazy cat ladies. They will drive you insane. You know, you get, you know, you're just minding your business. Boss tells you, yeah, listen, we're planning on getting out of here tonight. Should be an easy night. All right, cool. You're planning ahead. You got, you got area A, area B cleaned up. All this other stuff is fixed. Everything's clean. You're all set. You're good to go. You're ready to roll. And then you go back to the cat section, and sure enough, there's this old lady that's just like, Oh, I needed the friskies, and... Well, now it's... That whole section is ruined, and... She she doesn't care. Or, or we would have the boxes that would have specific flavors of cat food. Like, it would be, like, say, tuna with... I, I don't know. Like, shrimp and whatever other things cat food typically has in it. And... You know, th these, you know, old ladies would actually rip open the boxes. No, technically, yeah, you can kind of sell those cans individually because they still have barcodes. And I guess people were always like, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. They're still going to sell it anyway. And like, yeah, we are. But in terms of inventory sake, you're hurting us because now we have to, in a sense, defect out this whole box like, say you wanted one specific flavor of cat food out of that whole box. It's a box like 32. And you only wanted one can of one specific flavor. You, now we have to defect out the whole box and then take in all the cans as individuals. And it's just really aggravating. So, it... It, dep it, also, it depends on the store, too. Some stores take them in as individuals anyway, knowing that their customers are Looney Tunes like that. Um... I'll tell you, I've had some really weird ones. I, I, I had a woman come into my store and she said that she travels the world with her cat. But like she even admitted like she spoils. I, it was, you know, there's one, there's a difference between loving your animal and pretty much your world revolves around your animal. Like... Like, uh, no, no time for relationships or friends. No, my my cat needs me more. Like, mm, no, I I think I think I think human interaction is a little a tad bit more important. A tad bit. I mean, like you know, I, I say too, I love animals. I you know, loved working with them. I, I you know, having people come in with their dogs. Dogs were the best. Um. Seeing these people bringing all these different breeds of dogs, 
uh, into the store was always fun because usually they were pretty friendly for the most part. One or two, of course, were aggressive because people don't know how to, you know, take care of a dog. Um, let's see, what do I want? Hey, you know what? I'm just going to put a standard desk here. Because I figured, you know, who wants to eat at their desk? Uh, let's give him a computer. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're not going cheap. We are not going cheap. Yeah. But, um... I I'm having a brain fart. I'm sorry. But, yeah, you have your occasional aggressive dog just because the customer doesn't know how to raise a dog, in a sense. Um... And they, or you'd have one that was like super afraid of its own shadow. I had someone bring in a Shiba puppy, and it was the cutest thing ever. Like she bought a bed, and she looked at me like she was gonna buy a bed, and she had the dog in the bed. And she looked at me, she goes, "I'm sorry, is it okay if I have my dog in the bed? Um, he really is nervous. He, you know, I am planning on buying the bed. I'm like, yeah, listen, if you're buying it, it's fine. It's no problem, not, not at all. Like it was all, it was all cool. It was fine. And she, I remember. She let the dog down for a second because she wanted to let him walk around a little bit. Cause she was still, he was still a puppy. She wanted to try to get him a little bit more social and get a little bit more used to things. And this dog took the opportunity. He took the opportunity. He saw a chance to run. <laughs> and even though he was on a leash, he realized he was at a dis at like kind of a disadvantage. Oh, uh, any chairs. So he realized, oh, hey, there's a shelf there. Let me go run underneath it. And he booked and hid right under, like, right under the, right under the shelf. And I'm sitting there looking at this dog. I'm like, how did you squeeze your furry little rear end under this metal shelf? Like, what? I'm looking at the woman. I'm like, when did you get the dog? She's like, a couple, about a week ago. And I'm like, I'm like, Oh, she's like, yeah, I haven't really had much of a chance to get him used to the world yet. It's like, oh, this is not going to be easy. I'm like, so do you know how to get him out? She's like, no. Well, after a while, I think she ended up buying treats and we kind of coaxed him out. Um, And he, we kind of fooled him into like leave like getting out from under there but i've never seen a dog get so afraid that it actually dove for cover <laughs> under a shelf first time i've ever seen that and it was actually the last time i never saw another dog do that again still i thought it was kind of cute seeing seeing him react like that because it just i guess it was like the sense of innocence i guess you know most dogs could turn aggressive and bite the nearest person uh i guess we're good with this. You know what? I'm going to sell it. I am going to sell it for you guys. So we're going to sell the house and put it on auction. Let's see. Big bedroom. How sweet. Exactly one bedroom. Okay. I paid total of probably about 35000 36 8 profit of 18 Yeah. I'll take Donald Trusk's <laughs> offer. <laughs> sweet. All right, guys. I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, probably gonna play on and off, uh, on my own, just make some progress, that way you guys aren't stuck watching every little detail. Thank you, as always, for joining, hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoyed my little rants, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good night.